So AI voice just hit a whole new level. This week, we got 11 V3 Alpha, probably the most realistic AI voice model I've ever heard. OpenAI also dropped a big update to ChatGPT's advanced voice mode, giving it memory and apparently making it way easier to talk to. But voice wasn't the only thing making noise this week. Reddit filed a major lawsuit against Anthropic, accusing them of using Reddit content without permission to train their AI models. And on top of all that, Amazon is now testing humanoid robots that literally walk out of trucks to deliver packages. Meanwhile, Figure just set a new record for continuous autonomous factory work. Let's get into it. Alright, so you might have already seen this, but Eleven Labs just dropped their new AI voice model called Eleven V3 Alpha, and it's been going pretty viral. It supports 70 plus languages, multi-speaker dialogue, and even expressive audio tags. But as always, the best way to show you an AI voice model is to just let you hear it yourself. Hey Jessica, have you tried the new Eleven V3? I just got it. The clarity is amazing. I can actually do whispers now. Like this. Ooh, fancy. Check this out. I can do full Shakespeare now. To be or not to be, that is the question. <laughs> nice. Though I'm more excited about the laugh upgrade. Listen to this. <laughs> That's so much better than our old ha 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 robot chuckle. I know, right? And apparently we can do accents now too. Fancy a cup of tea? <laughs> wow, V2 me could never. I'm actually excited to have conversations now instead of just talking at people. We're off under the lights here for this semi-final clash. The stadium buzzing with anticipation. Eleven Labs United in their iconic black and white shirts, pushing forward with intent straight from the opening whistle. Driving down the wing, pace to Bernie, skips past one, skips past two. Oh, this is beautiful. One-on-one -on -one with the fullback, cuts inside. Oh, that's a lovely bit of footwork. And goal! Oh my goodness, they've done it again! So yeah, and there's actually a ton more demos, all just as impressive. I mean, you can just hear how the voices are way more breathy, if that makes sense. And they actually sound alive almost, or at least more present. OpenAI also rolled out an update to their advanced voice mode just a few days later. And they say it's now way more natural and effortless to talk to. More specifically, ChatGPT's voice mode now has access to memory, can sing, is much more naturally sounding, and apparently even stutters more. I don't use voice mode that much myself, but if you do, let me know if you noticed a difference. It's honestly crazy though how these voice models just keep getting better, even when you thought they were already very good. And it's not just voice, same thing has been happening with AI video and image generation as well. Now, speaking of OpenAI, they also held a live stream this week, where they announced a bunch of ChatGPT business updates. Things like seamless integration with Microsoft Outlook, Teams, Google Drive, Gmail, Linear, and more. They also introduced a new record mode, which lets ChatGPT record your audio and screen during meetings and then instantly gives you a full transcript and summary. I actually used to have an entry-level office job where taking notes and summarizing meetings was like a fourth of my entire job. So yeah, this feature might actually be way bigger than it seems. And for the developers out there, OpenAI also gave their coding agent, Codex, real-time access to the internet. So now it can search code databases and forums for more accurate, up-to-date responses. In other news, Reddit is suing Anthropic for what it calls an unlawful breach of contract. We won't go too deep into the legal weeds, but this user on X pulled together some of the key takeaways and a few bold quotes. So according to the filing, Reddit's CEO says Anthropic used Reddit's user data for commercial purposes without a license. Anthropic apparently unlawfully scraped Reddit 100,000 plus times, even after saying they had stopped. One of the statements reads, Anthropic's conduct runs counter to how it bills itself as the white knight of the AI industry. And another, Reddit is one of the last uniquely human places on the internet. So definitely some interesting statements there. 
But honestly, Anthropic does tend to frame itself as the only ethical AI company. So if this turns out to be true, which it kind of seems like it is, that would be pretty ironic. But then again, how do you even prove something like this actually happened? I mean, typically these types of lawsuits don't end up going anywhere. Although this one seems pretty big, so we'll see. Meanwhile, Anthropic also deepened its ties with the US government this week, announcing it will be supplying models for national security customers. They mention here, US national security customers may choose to use our AI systems for a wide range of applications, from strategic planning and operational support to intelligence analysis and threat assessment. So you can argue that this is yet another ethical dilemma. I mean, what do they mean by threat assessment? And so overall, while Anthropic did actually just report a tripling of its annual revenue, this hasn't exactly been the best week for them PR-wise, to say the least. Now, we can't talk about OpenAI and Anthropic without also talking about Google. They were pretty quiet this week, except for this Gemini 2.5 Pro update. It's not a huge release, but the model, which was already at the top, is now even better at coding, reasoning, science, and math. It shows improved performance across key benchmarks like Ader Polyglot, GPQA, and Humanities Last Exam, to name a few, and leads the LM Arena with a 24-point ELO score jump since the previous version, which was already in first place. So basically, Google's still on top, and Gemini 2.5 Pro is currently the best AI model overall. Now, surprisingly, we actually got some news from Apple this week, and it's probably not what you were expecting. As you can see here, they published a paper called The Illusion of Thinking, where they basically argue that reasoning models aren't actually reasoning, they're just mimicking reasoning patterns they've seen before. So I mean, this isn't exactly new, we kind of already know that to an extent, and at the end of the day, whether it's true reasoning or just a really good imitation, does it really matter? I mean, I guess it does if we're talking about actual AGI or systems that can generalize to novel environments. But if we're just talking about AI being useful for complex tasks like coding and it's delivering results, then that might be good enough. I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this though. I don't really have the technical knowledge to cover this paper deeper, so feel free to drop your thoughts below. And the timing is also pretty interesting, with Apple's annual developer conference right around the corner. This definitely feels like a bit of a precursor to how that event might go. Now, switching gears, as I mentioned briefly in the intro, Amazon is now testing out humanoid robots for deliveries. There's no actual footage of this, but here are some robots Amazon is currently using in their warehouses and factories. Amazon says they plan to have one of these robots right around in the back of a Rivian electric van, hopping in and out to drop off packages at people's doorsteps. When you think of the future of Amazon deliveries, you probably picture drones, but it's looking more and more like humanoid robots are going to be in the mix too. And maybe eventually, they'll be driven around by self-driving cars, which are also robots. So we'll have robots, driving robots, delivering packages made by other robots, and who knows, maybe your robot dog will even fetch it off the porch for you. Okay, maybe that's a bit too far, but honestly, this is closer than people realize. We also got a new demo this week from Figure AI, showcasing their robots working completely autonomously for an hour straight. Yeah, this is pretty insane. As you can see, the robot is sorting through packages and checking that everything's in order. I'm not exactly sure what it's doing, looks like some kind of quality control, but the fact that it can work uninterrupted for a full hour is actually insane. And remember, this is the worst it will ever be. Brett Adcock, the CEO of Figure, actually explained why humanoid robots are such a unique product in a recent interview, and why whoever can get hold of the market first might end up taking it all. Check this out. As you put more robots out to, to the world that can do something useful that people will pay you for, the cost of that robot like, per output of work will come down, because you'll just make more of them. You'll, have, like, you'll be up on the experience curve of manufacturing. And the second thing you'll do is the robots will learn to get better every day in the market and they will share that with the collective fleet. Not like kids, where like the kids have to like learn how to walk. My kids have to learn how to walk. Um, but our robots can share a neural network 
and do the same use case we talked about today or you've seen here with any other robot that came off the manufacturing line today. And so you basically, the, the, this is one of the first industries I think maybe in the, like the world for like, for like advanced hardware that it, it could be a winner or winners, maybe even winner take all market where like one group has the cheapest robot and it's the smartest. It's learning as you go, as it's making mistakes, as it's doing things successful, it learns like a human. And like, you're never gonna wanna have like the dumb employee or you're not gonna want the person at your house that's not the smartest, it's dangerous. You're gonna want the smartest employee and you want the smartest person in your house. And that will also be the cheapest. It's not like a computer or like a car or a phone. It's a, it's a living agent that's getting better and cheaper over time. Right. And the group that can get, the group or groups that can get a large amount of robots out that are useful to market will have a significant advantage and lead over everybody else. So yeah, I totally agree with Brett here. I've said this before and I'll say it again. People are still underestimating the potential of humanoid robots. I mean, if you really think about it, the use cases are almost limitless. Finally, to wrap up this week's recap, I wanted to quickly highlight the wave of FDA approvals for AI-related drugs and treatments we've been seeing lately. Clarity is the latest example, the first FDA-authorized AI platform for breast cancer prediction. The technical details aren't super important, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to dive deeper, but the point is, AI-powered healthcare is now clearing real-world regulatory hurdles. And that's obviously a huge win. Oh, and there was also this announcement from one of the AI godfathers, Yoshua Bengio. He's launching Law Zero, a nonprofit focusing on a new safe by design approach to AI that could both accelerate scientific discovery and provide a safeguard against the dangers of agentic AI. So, yeah, another big week in AI and a lot of things to keep an eye on. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.